I'm Charlie Wright of Gold Derby, and today I am speaking with three of the Emmy-nominated editors for the Hulu series, sketch comedy series, History of the World Part Two. I'm speaking with Daniel Flesher, George Mandel, and Angel Gamboa Bryant. Um, first question I want to ask, and I'll direct this to you first, George, um, is uh, how was the post-production process of History of the World Part Two different from the past projects that you had worked on? That's a good question. Um, I do a lot of half hour comedies and not so much sketch. I've done one other sketch show before. Um, this was my deepest dive into sketch comedy. Um, and so the post process was different in the sense that instead of having a season with one set of characters and maybe some guests here and there going through you know, the journey of one season, this was um, kind of, if you don't like the the weather, wait five minutes because it's just constantly changing. You know, you've got all these different genres that were that were spoofing and and um, and so because of that, we ended up um, we ended up collaborating very very heavily, like an improv comedy group. You know, just like with like it, it was just yes ands all day. You know, and and that was uh, incredibly refreshing. You know, on a half hour comedy, you're kind of in the room by yourself for a lot of the time. This was not like that. Uh, how about you, Angel? How was this, how was this different than the other projects that you had worked on in the past? Yeah, I this is also a very similar experience for me in this in that this is my first sketch comedy show. So I've done I do all comedy, mostly stand up comedy and multi cam sitcoms. Um, so I really loved the process as far as how collaborative we were able to be, but we also had a lot of freedom. Our executive producers, uh, Wanda Sykes, Nick Kroll, Ike Barinholtz, and Dave Stassen were all incredibly, not only incredibly talented at writing, creating scenes and crafting from scratch, but when it came to post and we got in the edit bay and got the chance to work with them, they were always in the situation where it was like, if we asked a question about a scene or we wanted to try something like, yeah, do it, try it, let's see. And we would all look at it together and maybe even dive into it further. And every time it elevated the scene, which I thought was just a really cool experience. I've never had that much collaboration in Edit Bay before. This was the first time. And what about you, Daniel? How is this different from your from the from your past projects? Well, I think going in line with what everybody else has said here, every so every project I've done in the past is one genre, one tone. And throughout that project, whether it's a film or a series, you work on finding whatever that tone is. For this, every sketch was a different tone with a different genre parody. So every day was kind of a new adventure and you sort of had to have a, a new tool set to, uh, to, to whip out every day. So, um, uh, you know, we've talked about how, uh, you know, you just talked about how uh, it, this has been different than what you've worked on in the past. And I'll start with you on this one, Daniel. Uh, how did your previous editing experience help you to put this series together? Yeah, I mean, I'm... I've had, I think we all have wildly different backgrounds. I have a background in an eclectic array of things from you know, feature films to, to social media. And so, you know, we had social media sketches. I was able to pull some of my experiences and put them into those and more feature film things. Um, like, you know, I love musicals. So uh, Fiddler on the Roof is one of my favorite movies and I was able to parody that. Uh, or bring my love for that film into um, the intro to the Russian Revolution uh, temple, Meet the Mudmans, and that whole uh, musical number. And uh, what about you, Angel? Um, I come from a very wide variety of shows. You know, I've done everything from un unscripted to you know stand up, as I mentioned, and multi cam sitcoms, and even drama. Um, and what's cool about it is the more experience you get, the more bag of tricks you learn. Every show has a different bag of tricks. I feel like every time I get onto a new format, I'm learning a new thing. Um, and what was cool about this show is there was there were so many different kinds of parodies and scenes. You know, we did parody everything from uh, Jackass. We did um, uh, the Real Housewives parody. And, you know, and we also did a multi-camera sitcom from the 1970s with Shirley Chisholm. So I was able to kind of draw on all of those experiences and add elements to those scenes. I think that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, we we definitely all brought a, a different, um, you know, different tricks, as Angel said, like from our experience in various genres. Um, I have a background in a lot of improv comedy and half hour comedy. 
um, as well as documentary. And I think those things, I, you know, I could point to the Curb Your Enthusiasm sketch, which was heavily improvised. We, you know, ours was called Curb Your Judaism. Um, and it was one of our, one of our um, sketches about the story of Jesus. Um, and it was, you know, uh, Judas was played by Nick Kroll, who is a mastermind at improv and comes from, you know, and, and, and we have a history going back to working on the league together where what he was mean? also doing improv all the time. And it was like incredibly, it was a really weird meta experience for both of us, I think, to kind of be having Nick playing the Larry David character in this sketch about, you know, the story of Jesus. It was just, it was bizarre. But um, that that was that was a lot of fun for me. Uh, I was a huge fan of the league. Um, what was the name of the children's toy thing that they had? Oh God! Uh, oh God. It, but a friend, a room, an old roommate of mine, drunkenly purchased a talk a, a one from the FX store. Mm. So uh, I, uh, I'll <laughs> use, I'll say thank you for that one. Uh, <laughs> that was such a blast. And and the the uh, EP who created the league Jeff Schaefer also is a huge has a huge hand in Curb Your Enthusiasm so that and we had JB Smoove so that sort of the whole thing was just very you know it was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Angel uh, I'll start with you for the next question uh, and this is just simply what were some of your uh, personal favorite sketches uh, from the series? Um, I mean there's so many but I think one of the ones that I both enjoyed uh, working on and watching is the Russian Revolution. It just it has so much variety from the musical numbers to, uh, as I mentioned, there's parodies of Jackass and uh, with, um, I can't think of his name right now, uh, Rasputin. Um, so I think the variety in all of the Russian Revolution is what made that the best. And also this, you know, we had a lot of celebrities, big celebrities like Jack Black and Danny DeVito and all that, so. And uh, what about you, Daniel? I think my favorite sketch that I cut was, um, I think we ended up calling it JC Resurrection, Christianity the Movie. So it was sort of the end of, or the culmination of our Jesus through line story up until the end. Uh, you know, they, they shot this, they shot um, all these scenes with uh, Brock O'Hearn mm -hmm. as Jesus, as a sort of like buff Jesus action guy. Um, and they shot these scenes as sort of longer form narratives, which is great because now it's able to choose the bits that work in the trailerish kind of moments. So I, I feel like I really got to to craft the uh, the look and the feel of that one. And what about you, George? Um, I mean, there there's so many, and you know, because it's sketch, it's not it's not all one thing. There's it's it's a hard question to answer. But I mean, one of one of the sketches that was sort of the most um, near and dear to me was Jews in Space, um, which was the final sketch of the whole the whole season. Um, and it had Nick Kroll, Wanda Sykes, Ike Barinholtz. It was directed by David Stassen. Um, we had Sarah Silverman in there, um, you know, and it was just fast and furious, um, just bam, 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 tight jokes. Um, and it was a callback to the original movie, you know, so it's a sketch 40 years in the, in the making. Um, and one of the most interesting things about it for me as an editor was that we were actually able to dig into Mel's archives of film dailies and pull out some of the footage from his mini miniature shoots, you know, where he had these like Star of David shaped ships flying through space, space. And, um, you know, we were able to use some of that footage for, for, to, to help with the danger and to help when, when our, uh, you know, when our deep fake Mel Jesus character beams into the ship. Um, and uh, it, it was just such a such a blast to use that stuff and, and get to incorporate it into the story. Um, and we all, we also ended up using some of that stuff in in uh, an ice skating sketch that Dan cut. Uh, they're referring to the Hitler on Ice sketch, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, it's interesting. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked with Drew Tarver, uh, who who plays Hitler in that, and I asked him, you know, what it was like to play Hitler with a uh, glitter facial with glitter all over him and he was just ecstatic about that yeah that was a really interesting sketch to work on um it was so fun to look through the the dailies from the original film uh i remember so in the in the original film it was an 18 second clip they used and that was the entire sketch but they actually filmed quite a bit of coverage 
There was mediums, close-ups, and wides. The editor from the original film used the first take of that. And after that, they started rolling on some more uh, coverage that had a little bit more choreography. Um, and then in the second to last take, I believe it was take 18, um, that actor actually fell and slipped. And that's what we based the sketch around of, of Hitler falling. <laughs> oh, that's priceless. Um, uh, I, George, I want to start with you for the next one. And uh, I'm the next, the, you know, you've been talking about this with, uh, so with uh, how you've answered some of these other questions um, uh, in the, with the idea that uh, the, uh, the sketches weren't just limited to one episode. You'd have sketches that would go on for several episodes. And I was curious as to uh, what was that process like in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how you were telling these larger stories within the sketch comedy format? Right, uh, a big challenge. Um, so in in your typical sketch comedy series, you have short sketches and they go together and maybe there's a little callback here and there, but you don't do these. These were very ambitious, longer stories that we broke into smaller pieces. Um, we always referred to them as tent poles. So we had our tent poles and then we had our sort of you know normal sketches and the tent poles were woven throughout the season we had a lot of fun puzzling all that stuff together, you know, figuring out what was the best flow for an episode where you would have, you know, maybe some civil war and some Shirley Chisholm, and then also try to like wedge in like a crazy sketch about Alexander Graham Bell, like, you know, having sex with his telephone. Um, uh, these, these kinds of things were a lot of fun to figure out. And, uh, and we worked really closely with all our, all our EPs and posts to, to try and make uh, every episode uh, flow well, be as funny as possible, and also, um, also just have a nice variety. You know, it's after all, it's just, it's a sketch variety show. So we we wanted each episode to feel like it had a nice sort of well-rounded amount of material. And um, uh, next question, I want to start with uh, Angel. I want to start with you on this one. Uh, as I said, you guys got uh, nominated for um, uh, the Emmy for picture editing for variety program. But uh, this is all, the first nomination for all of you. But Angel, uh, you uh, got no triple the good news uh, that morning when because you also got uh, nominated. Uh, you received two nominations for uh, editing for a multicam comedy series. Uh, well, I just wanted to start with you and just ask what was your reaction when you found out the news. Yeah, it was um, it was a very surreal morning, I guess because I've been editing for a couple of decades and I just never really expected, I guess, to get the kind of news I did that morning. But I was just kind of going along my business and friends and directors and producers like out of everywhere around 8.30 that morning when everything was announced just started texting me like, oh my God, congratulations. And I was like, what is happening? So it was, it was like shocking and amazing, you know, probably some of the best news you could hear. I think it's very rewarding and very gratifying when you've had a long career to have that kind of um, news and share it with your colleagues and your peers and this team. It's like such an incredible team. If there's anybody else I could have shared this with, I, I can't, I just can't imagine. Everybody from George, Dan, and Steph, just like the best editorial team I've ever worked with. And uh, what about you, George? My reaction to hearing that I was an Emmy nominee? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Unbelievable. Um, I, I was actually on a family vacation uh, about to get on a kayak in the Russian River with like my little kids and um, and my phone started blowing up and I was like, oh, what's this? You know, <laughs> I kind of like honestly, I knew I knew the announcements were coming, but I kind of just like was busy doing something else in the moment. And then, you know, um, uh, yeah, it, similar to Angel. Um, I don't want to say it's one third as much, maybe half as much. <laughs> And uh, what about you, Daniel? I, I, well, I think I the first, um, the first person who told me about it, the, uh, the first news I got from it was from Angel. She sent us a group text, and uh, I think I was kind of in shock. I was like, "No way!" And then I immediately texted my parents, like, "Oh, I was just nominated. I was just nominated for an Emmy." Um, and then I started researching it. I tried to find it online. I couldn't find any information on it. So I was like, oh, that just might, it must, must be a fluke and that's okay. And, but it slowly dawned on me that it actually happened. And I think I'm still a little bit in shock by it. It's incredibly humbling. 
well, uh, uh, Daniel, Angel, and George, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best uh, over uh, the rest of the season. And to all our viewers, please like, share, subscribe, and make sure you stick with Gold Derby to make your predictions for all for everything Emmys for the rest of the season. Take care.